evening, everyone. Welcome to the Tacoma Park Silver Spring Campus, the Morris and Gwendolyn Kaferts Foundation Arts Center. My name is Deborah Preston. I am the Dean for the Arts here at Montgomery College and one of the members of the production team for this um, iteration of Portraits of Life, LGBT Stories of Being. I'm very happy to have you all here. Thank you so much for coming to our opening reception. Uh, we're very proud of this exhibit, very proud of the people who are in the exhibit, and very happy to have so many of our friends and neighbors and colleagues here to celebrate with us. So I want to begin by recognizing the production team who worked on the, uh, the exhibit. And it's not a terribly long list, but I would love to recognize each of them. Uh, one is our designer, Donna Desencio. It's here in the front. Hello. Another is the gentleman who conducted all of the interviews for all of the subjects, and that's David Fogel. I'd also like to recognize our two fabulous photographers for the exhibit, Sanjay Suchak and Bill Tata, who is here somewhere. All right, he's here somewhere, I swear. Um, I'd also like to thank Mike Anthony and Maureen Cole for doing a fabulous job of hanging the show. That might have been at the last possible second, but uh, you know, we're not gonna talk about that. Um, they were flexible, they were great, they got it up, and I think it looks wonderful, so I'm really grateful to them as well. I also want to thank the person who doesn't really like to be recognized, but the person who's the producer of the exhibit who kept everything moving behind the scenes, and that's David Phillips. Thank you all for coming. We really appreciate your being here. Uh, later in the program, we're going to recognize the, um, the subjects, the participants, the beautiful people on the panels. We're going to do that a little bit later in the program, so if any of you guys are here, and I know a lot of you are, please don't go anywhere. That's coming, okay? But at this moment, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the president of Montgomery College and one of the subjects of a panel, Dr. Darian Pollard. Thank you. Whoa, that worked for me, huh? It's all about projection, right, right, right. Thank you, Dr. Preston, uh, for that introduction. I always am so grateful for the person who goes before me who does such a phenomenal job at the introduction. So I am very grateful to you. And thank you all uh, for being here tonight. Uh, it, is, it is both a professional and personal privilege uh, for the college to have this ex exhibition, Portraits of Life, LGBT Stories of Being, Embrace, Empower, and Express, devoted to celebrating the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and trans transgender community of Montgomery County. Uh, I believe this is probably groundbreaking in a lot of ways, and I'm delighted that Montgomery College is indeed doing this. As was mentioned earlier, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge just a few very special people. Uh, Delegate Heather Mazur from District 20, who represents this campus. We're very happy to have her here. As you know, she sits on the House, Dele House of Delegates Appropriations Committee. Uh, she is a wonderful, phenomenal uh, champion of this institution. And she's also a healthcare policy expert. So we are delighted that not only does she champion for human rights, uh, public policy, but she also is a phenomenal fan of this institution and the work that we do. So I'm so personally grateful that she's here and look forward to hearing her in just a little while. I would also be remiss if I didn't take the opportunity to acknowledge and thank uh, Senator Ida Rubin. Here's the, the beautiful thing. When I uh, have been at the college now about two years, and every time I come into these events, they talk about different people. So I get the, my prep list and I'm looking and they said, we have somebody really special coming because if it was not for her working with, on behalf of this institution, this building and the work that we've been doing would not be possible. So I want to thank you for being here tonight and, and always being a champion of the college. Of course, uh, we are deeply grateful for everyone who made this day possible. Uh, our honorary co-chairs who are unable to be here tonight, uh, but I have to say uh, both of them, Ann Kaiser, uh, Delegate Ann Kaiser and Mayor Jeffrey Slavin, uh, both of whom are uh, deep personal friends, but they're also wonderful advocates and champion of this institution, and they care deeply about the county that they serve. So I'm so delighted uh, that they wanted to lend to be honorary chairs, but they also have been instrumental in helping to 
get some of the folks who were part of this exhibit, but also very clearly wanting to make sure that the college uh, was able to bring this group of people together. So I'm very excited about that. In addition, I would like to thank the Sanford and Doris Slavin Foundation for sponsoring this wonderful event, because without those resources, it would not have been possible. And I also want to thank the members, yeah. Thank you. And I'd like to thank the members of the college and the broader community who devoted their time and energy to this. Uh, I know for a fact that this was a labor of love. Uh, and I'm so grateful to the design. I'm so grateful to the photographers, for the writers, because all the people who come together to put this, it has definitely had to have been a labor of love uh, for it to come out as wonderful as it has done. And I also want to thank uh, those of you who allowed us to hear your stories. Uh, and to have your pictures because um, it is indeed a beautiful face. In fact, I was just talking with one of our students earlier who said, I didn't know that these people lived in Montgomery County. That's the power of this. Oh, okay, I have a moment right there. Um, um, <laughs> Because you remind us on a daily basis uh, of a quote that I once heard that the fundamentals of change are stubborn faith, rebellious hope, and defiant love. Um, I celebrate you uh, for giving your voice and your experience as a member of this community in Montgomery County. In fact, what I would offer to you is that all of us are really just regular folks, a part of a bigger community. And oftentimes I think about this um, in terms of images. Uh, I tend to write more, but every time images make sense to me, and I think about Russian nesting dolls. I know what those are. And you know you have this where the bigger doll is on the outside, and you open it up, and there's a smaller one, there's a smaller one, there's a smaller one. And the part that's very interesting about that is that the small communities fill up the core of the bigger nesting doll. Each community, every large, every one of them, makes the other larger, and it makes it more stable. It gives it meaning, it gives it depth. And that's what this is about here today. Without all of our communities, the larger one is empty inside. It is just a shell without the communities filling it up. I would suggest to you that we're all empty shells without the people who are around us, the people who give us meaning and who give us depth. In fact, it reminds me of a, a South African uh, philosophy called Mbutu. South African Archbishop Desmond Tutu explains that the fundamental tenets of Mbutu are, if I diminish you, I diminish myself. If I diminish you, I diminish myself. The essence of being human centers on how we relate to the other people who are around us, and our differences are meant to be embraced. The Archbishop has said, all belong, gay, lesbian, so-called straight, all, all are meant to be held in this incredible embrace that we will not let go of. Not too long ago, I had the pleasure, I guess I should say pleasure, of sitting next to a gentleman on a plane. And often it happens, he shared with me that he was flying on his anniversary, and he was uh, disturbed by that, but we talked about it, and we started to exchange personal information about each other and love and loss, and I, I told him about this phenomenal woman uh, that I've loved deeply for over 20 years. Uh, I talked about this glory. Yeah, that'd be her. I talked about this glorious little boy named Miles, uh, who is simply uh, to borrow from uh, Mary, Mayor Cory Booker, a manifestation of the conspiracy of our love. <laughs> Near the end of our time together, the gentleman said to me, "You must have great courage to be in your role and to be out." So I kind of paused. I thought about it for a little while, and I said, hmm, I'm not quite sure if it's great courage, but just absolute freedom and self-love. And then I share with him a piece of a, a quote that I love, and it's actually in my office, and many of you know I try to figure out how to get in every speech that I say, that <laughs> <laughs> it's one by Marianne Williamson. It literally transformed my life the moment I heard it. And it says, as we let our own light shine, we give permission unconsciously for other people to do the same. As we're liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So to me, that's what the Portraits of Life is about. It's about embracing who we are, but also remembering the diversity of our entire community. Rather than diminish others 
and thus diminish ourselves, we tell stories, we tell our stories, we share our narratives to educate, to empower, to enlighten, and to connect. We recognize that without each other, we are mere shells. We are just the outer nesting doll, void of substance, void of depth, void of strength, void of humility. And I hope this exhibit liberates and empowers you to embrace the diversity of our community. And in turn, it may do something else. It may make us, each of us, a little bit better, a little bit fuller, a little bit more courageous, and perhaps even a little bit more grateful to live in the community that we do. Thank you all for being here this evening. Thank you, Dr. Pollard. <laughs> I got a very nice note during the, uh, while I was sitting to the side there that we also have with us this evening two members of the Montgomery College Alumni Board. And we want to recognize them as well. And that is Ms. Tookie Gentlecore. And of course, Ms. Debbie Dwyer, who is one of our subjects as well. Now please join me in welcoming to the podium, podium um, our delegate, Heather Missouri. Good evening, everyone. Happy Pride. Come on, we're gay people. Let's hoop and holler it up a little bit. Show that you're proud. So. I have known that Dr. Pollard and I were separated at birth for quite some time <laughs> because the moment she got into this role at Montgomery College, we were two peas in a pod, just cruising on four cylinders at every level, talking about what we needed to do to keep this institution moving forward, embracing the diversity that the student body and the teachings here help promote in our community, talking about how much we love Adele. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but what I didn't realize until tonight is that we share uh, a love of Marianne Williamson. And so I am going to prove that we were separated at birth by sharing the first half of that quote with the rest of the audience because I too find it incredibly inspirational. Our greatest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our greatest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. We ask ourselves, who am I to be talented, fabulous, gorgeous, and amazing? Actually, who are you not to be? We were born to make manifest the glory of God that's inside of us. And when we let that light shine, we unconsciously give permission to others to do the same. This entire portfolio tonight, these voices, these stories embody that quote, that inspiration. Because we in the LGBT community, we know what it's like to transcend. We know at very deep, profound, personal levels what it means to live a truth when you spend much of your life thinking that you have to fear that thing about you. As you read the stories, these really profoundly moving stories on the walls this evening, notice how many of them talk about love and fear, courage, transcendence, turning the other cheek, not putting back out into the world what we have spent so much time from very young age receiving those negative messages, sometimes imposed on us by other people around us, sometimes imposed on us by ourselves because of the communities that we have grown up in. But we've all transcended, each and every one of us to tell a beautiful, amazing story about what it means to live a life in truth, what it means to have no fear, to break free 
And when we do that, our entire communities, our entire state, our entire country breaks free with us. We are seeing this happen. How lucky are we to live in this era? When I married my wife, we had five nieces who were our attendants. They were our flower girls. And my sister tells me, uh, they, I grew up in a small town in rural Illinois, and my, nie one, my oldest niece at the time was seven, was out on the trampoline jumping with a neighbor girl who was nine years old. And my sister overhears this conversation. In rural Illinois, where it was a scary place for me to grow up with a secret that I was gay. And in 2005, when we got married, my seven-year-old niece is jumping around on a trampoline with the nine-year-old neighbor girl and says, Anna and I are getting ready to go to Maryland. We're going to be flower girls in our Auntie Deb and our Auntie Heather's wedding. And my sister says, Mackenzie's brow furled up, and she says, Auntie Heather and Auntie Deb's wedding? And Gracie says, yeah, they're getting married. And she thought about it for a minute, and Mackenzie says, oh, here comes the bride, here comes the bride. <laughs> and Gracie said, yeah. And they just kept jumping. And they went along and played. This is the world that Gracie is growing up in because we have Jeffrey Slavin and Mike Miller and Ann Kaiser and Bonnie Berger and Larry Jacobs and, and Debbie Dwyer telling their stories here on the wall today, sharing their courage, not just because it's Pride Month, not just because it's a cool thing to be a part of a Montgomery College exhibit, and it is really cool. It's a great <laughs> exhibit. But because these people have told their stories every single day. And you know what? Every person in here, we could have a picture of you on this wall. You've got a story to share, too. Do you tell it? Do you tell it? Do you connect with people and share your story and let that light shine? That's what Montgomery County is about. That's why we have the best schools in the nation. That's why we will continue to be the state that grows out of the recession better and faster than anybody else, because we innovate, because we're smart, because we work hard, because we care, and because we connect with each other, because we value community, because we can look at your story and see the reflection on what that means about me and my life. Keep doing it, Montgomery County. There is something amazing happening here. There is transcendent power at work in our communities and you can keep it going and it's gonna send one hell of a message to the rest of the world come november when the vote count that we turn out here defends our marriage equality victory on the ballot thank you very much thank you so much I got chills, you should like go into like the ministry or something if, 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 if the political thing doesn't work out, doesn't work out for you, you're still good. <laughs> yeah. So the last speaker on the agenda is Mr. David Vogel. And I'll say a little bit about what a pleasure it is to work with David. This is our second Portraits of Life project working together. And it's you know, he and I were talking about this. You get so emotionally invested in these projects. You can't help it. And partially, I think it's especially true for David and for David Phillips and for me because David does these amazing interviews and then we read them all and then we turn them into this little pocket of text. And, and first of all, it is a terrifying and awesome responsibility to try to tell someone else's story, even in their own words, because, you know, you're picking and choosing. And it's funny, as I look out and I see the different participants, you know, I, I feel like I know you all. I know your stories. I know who your children are. I'm thinking, I don't, they don't know me at all. <laughs> it's a very strange feeling. You just want to walk up and go, hi, I know you. I like you. Um, <clears throat> but now we're going to hear a few words from the person. When, when I found out we were doing another portraits, I immediately said I won't do it unless I can have David Vogel because he is such a great person to talk to and he did such a great job on getting people to tell their story. So please welcome David. Thank you. 
Wow. Thank you so much. Um, man, I wish I was separated at birth from you two as well. <laughs> <laughs> two incredible women. Wow. Um, first, I'd really like to thank Dr. Pollard because what a lot of people don't know was that she really was the inspiration for this iteration of the Portraits of Life series. And maybe it's because you wanted a panel of yourself. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd also like to thank Debbie and David for including me again. It was a real honor and pleasure and um, powerful, to say the least. Um, it was also incredible to work with Donna and Bill and Sanjay, the photographers, just a, a wonderful production team. Um, and Susie, who I think is here, who a lot of people don't know, but she did all the transcribing of these incredibly long and in-depth interviews. So just a little bit about the process of what goes on here. Um, you know, there's an interview process, and typically it, it, it's, it's about two hours in length. And that's a lot of time to sit down and spend with someone and open your heart and open your soul and let them into a place that might not be that comfortable or, or easy to go to. So to all the participants who welcomed me into their homes and into their offices and shared with me, thank you so much. I feel like I got a, a crash course in LGBT 101 and uh, <laughs> it, was, it was intense, it was awesome, and I'm very appreciative. Um, I wanna be brief, I wanna get back to drinking and hobnobbing <laughs> and eating and shaking hands. Um, but I, I did wanna talk about two things in particular that kinda struck me as, as the interviewer and getting a chance to sit down with everyone. Um, the first was personal power and, and its relevance to a social movement. One of the things that became very um, relevant and, and poignant for me um, as I was going through this interview process was just the incredible strides that this community and, and we in general have, have gone through. You know, a, a generation ago, uh, a lot of the participants they didn't have mentors, they didn't have family members, they certainly didn't have community centers or hotlines that they could call and talk to somebody and, and get the help that they needed in, in trying to accept who they were and understand who they were. And in a generation, you know, I'm, I'm excited to say as, as an adult, as, as, as a new parent, certainly here in Montgomery County, the, those places exist. Um, and it's in large part to the people in this exhibit and, and the courage that they had to be leaders, be advocates, and to, to speak out and be recognized. Um, so that was, that was really uh, prevalent for me. And, it, and it's not to say that the work is, in, is far from done. Um, as, as Heather pointed out, we've got this incredible opportunity here in Maryland in November to be heard and to be the first state um, to say we want marriage equality and I hope that everybody goes out in their communities, their barbecues, their pool parties, whatever it is and talks about it and says, hey, this is important, let's do this. Um, the other thing that uh, I wanted to talk about um, is uh, the other thing that hit home for me and don't take this personally or as an offense, but it's just the, the normalness of this community. <laughs> You know, I mean, there's this big stereotype out there that, you know, it's like, you know, everybody's an actor or an artist or whatever, and you see all this coverage of, of gay pride parades and it's flamboyant and, and whatnot. And, you know, I'm, I'm going in these people's homes and they're lawyers and they're, um, yeah, some of them are artists and, and they're politicians and they're educators and, um, you know, the, the point at the end of the day is that they're our neighbors and they're just like us, you know. We, we wake up in the morning, we have our coffee, we read the paper, we go to work. A lot of us sit on our butts all day at desks and computers. And we come home and we have dinner with those that we love and we read a book and go to bed by 10 p.m. You know, it's, it's, there's not that much different about us. And, um, it really kind of hit home for me going through this as well, and it, it was wonderful. And, you know, uh, one, one thing in particular kind of crystallized all this for me. It was the, at the end of an interview of a 
gay couple in, in, in suburban Montgomery County and nice house and nice art and really great aesthetic. We were going over, you know, the, in the family and catching up and stuff like that. And um, they were preparing dinner. And what was dinner? Macaroni, cheese, and hot dogs. <laughs> you know, if this wasn't a portrait of the 21st century American family, I don't know what was. And uh, if this bothers anybody or it, you know, gives them fear in any which way, I'm sorry. Uh, I don't understand it. But um, once again, this, is, this has been a wonderful, insightful, powerful experience for me. I, I feel truly honored. Uh, I hope the power of the exhibit resonates with everybody. It's an incredible piece of advocacy. And uh, thank you so much. <laughs> The last thing I want to say before we ask um, the participants to come up for a nice group photo, those who want to, completely optional. You know, when we start, a lot of people tonight have talked about this exhibit in terms of courage, and I think that's a very important point. I find that when we start these projects, we don't always know what they're about. Like, you think you know what they're about. Like, when we started the student experiences, we thought it was about survival, but it turned out it wasn't about survival at all. It was about triumph and moving forward and, and what you did beyond surviving. So we started this one and I remember at one point David and I were talking about, yeah, but what's it going to be about? You know, it can't just be about gay people. I mean, that's just, like you said, that's just not that exotic, you know. It's got, <laughs> it's got to be about something. So we thought, well, you know, it's going to be about how, you know, it's just, it's our community. And, and, and then after you know, we read all the transcripts, the interviews were done, we read the transcripts, we looked at what was in the narratives, and then we realized what many people have said, this is an exhibit about courage. It's about the courage to know who you are, the courage to accept who you are, the courage to be true to yourself, to say to the world, I may not be what you expected I would be, but this is who I am, and I hope that you can, you can appreciate that. And I think it takes tremendous courage to be a part of an exhibit like this. Even people, you know, you know and we, even people who are out and there, it's very, very comfortable still. I mean, putting your face in a story on a wall <laughs> takes a bit of courage. And so I want to close by thanking all of the participants for showing yeah. such incredible courage and living their lives authentically and also in being a part of this exhibit. I had a student at our Tacoma Park Civil Spring campus who stopped me in the hallway and said to me, you don't know what you represent to me. And he talked about his own experience as a, a gay Latino male and talked about what it was like to grow up in a community. And he says, and I'm able to go home and tell my parents that I can be a college president one day. Montgomery County has hundreds and thousands of well-deserving LGBT members who do good work day in and day out. And I am humbled to be a part of this exhibit, just with a little small part that I do. It's very empowering and permission-giving and supportive to have us be honored and more than just patronized. It's important to share our lives and let people know that we are in this community and we're just like you. One of the things almost everybody said was that there was some point in their life when it was scary being different. And every one of these people overcame that.